me do my two step. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Next Shot. I am Roger with Unlimited Photography, and I'm here with my co-host, Luke Lukasik from Georgia. How are you doing, Luke? I am doing great. I'm excited for today's episode. I am, too. And guys, if you uh, don't recognize him already, this is the famous Pete McPherson. Uh, Pete <laughs> is actually uh, the founder of uh, Do You Even Blog? So, Pete, kind of give us a, a quick background uh, on how you became the famous blog guy. <laughs> it's funny. I would <laughs> probably not have used the adjective famous to uh, describe it, but I, I appreciate the compliment. Nonetheless, Roger. You're welcome. Um, so I'll give you, would you like the like the 10 minute story or like the three minute version? Because Give me the, the two to three minutes so everybody can know okay. exactly your, your background and what, what we're doing here today. Right. All right. I like that. So I uh, grew up not knowing what I wanted to be when I grew up. I will say that I've always taken photos of some kind. I never really wanted to be a photographer, but I always enjoyed the craft. I would take pictures of my friends and they were like, what are you doing? This is weird. Now it's not weird because we all have phones. But back then it was weird. So I ended up studying music and I was good at it, but it's not really what I wanted to do. I majored in music in college. And I swapped majors a couple of times, business, Italian. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. Eventually settled on sociology because I thought it was really interesting. And I graduated, uh, you want to guess what year? In the United States when the job market started tanking. I'll spoil it for you, 2008, <laughs> right? I have a degree in sociology yes. and everybody's looking at me like, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Like we don't have any jobs for you. So the short version is I went back to school for accounting, the only reason I chose accounting was because A, I thought I had something to do with money and I like money. And B, I was told that jobs are plentiful. You go get an accounting degree, you can get a job. And apparently that's what I needed. So I did. I got my degree in accounting. I got a master's degree. I studied really hard and I took my CPA exam and I got my first like grown up job in corporate America, accounting, yada, yada. Um, all through this time, I should mention, I am <clears throat> starting blogs. I'm uh, building websites just for fun. I just thought it was super interesting. Started my first podcast in 2009. It was absolutely terrible, by the way, but I was like, this is fun. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Playing around with audio, video gear, and the internet and digital marketing. It's kind of fun. So I'm starting blogs. And in uh, 2016, so I'm fast forwarding a little bit here. Uh, I just want to say that I hated my job. I got paid a lot of money. It was corporate accounting. I loved my coworkers. They were all great. But commuting in Atlanta uh, is terrible. And just working 40, 50, 60 hours a week and just like, I just hate it, right? I have a young child at home. I want to be with that, right? So I right. found the next best thing, which was going to allow me to pursue, to pursue side hustles. Um, I didn't have one yet, but maybe a blog or a business or do some freelance work or uh, shoot weddings, which is something I always wanted to do, but I still have it to this day. Um, and so I took the startup job. It was halftime. They were going to pay me salary and benefits, like, but I only had to work 20 hours a week, right? This is the best of both worlds. I got to start. Right. Well. I moved my family. My wife quit her job. I quit my job. We sold our house, uh, moved up back to Rome, Georgia, which is my hometown, where we're from. I got one paycheck and then I got laid off. Oh, wah, wah. so we, we <laughs> got stuck in this position, not knowing really what to do. I didn't really want to go back to accounting. I didn't really want to go back to work. I didn't want to move again. My wife agreed with me. And so I kind of like jumped in with uh, both feet, like hustling my butt off to try and make money through a podcast. The Do You Even Blog podcast came first, kind of an accident. I didn't really know what else to do, but... I started it and I, I did interviews kind of like, you know, 
Roger and Luke are doing right now. Right. And I'll say, I'll say it took off, not like earning like millions of dollars took off, but it, it started working enough to where I could continue doing it. So that was about five years ago, four and a half, five years ago. And this is what I've been doing ever since I blog, I, I do YouTube. It's my primary channel. Uh, the podcast is still going occasionally though. Don't focus on it. I do a little bit of freelance work, but mostly I just talk to creators all day, every day. And I'm, I'm very fortunate enough to kind of, uh, get paid for it. <laughs> yes. That's, that's very good. Uh, and going back to the, the YouTube channel, uh, we, we just researched this again, just to refresh, but congratulations on your 8.12 thousand or K as they say subscribers. And, and I'm glad to say that I'm one of them, you know? You so, okay. and Luke, oh, yes. <laughs> we share, yes. we share all this stuff. Trust me while we're <laughs> doing our day jobs, you know, we're, we're constantly looking for these people that uplift us and, and keep us motivated. And you, you have a voice uh, that people want to listen to, you know, and I've started watching more of your, YouTube channel and Luke has as well to do more research to make sure, Hey, you know, this is a good fit for, for some of our um, viewers out there to get to know a little bit more about what you do and some of the things that we see as well. So uh, again, congratulations on your YouTube subscribers, man. We're, we're very, uh, uh, we're very glad to support people like you. Yeah, man. Well, that means a lot. I don't yeah. really know how to respond to that other than, I mean, I, I really do appreciate it. I mean, I, yeah, I think you're doing a really good job. And like I say, you know, the questions that we're going to go uh, ask you today and uh, I'll let Luke get started here in a second. But I think it's going to help, yeah. again, you know, our audience on your side and our side to help clarify, you know, some of the things that we can do with our photography and videography businesses going forward. So, yeah. All right, Luke, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's get the questions yeah. rolling and let's uh, let's put him in the hot seat. All right. So the first one is. Uh, you have some, some YouTube videos on SEOs and for beginners, um, but if you had to give like just a quick two or three bullet points for somebody who's getting started on a blog or a web page and wants to get uh, higher in the SEO search, uh, mm -hmm. what 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 would those tips be? You're gonna hate me for this. No, no, I'll, no. I'll get to the tips maybe, but um, given the given your audience specifically, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter in my opinion whether it's photography or videography or anything kind of in that like creative space. My first question, if somebody came and asked me that would be like, why, why do you care about SEO? Why do you want to, why do you even want to start a blog? What, what is it there? And I just encourage anybody who's listening to this to think that through a lot of times you'll discover like Roger and Luke, or you'll discover Pete and you'll be like, oh man, I got to get me a, like a, a nice portfolio. And man, it'd be nice if I started driving traffic to it and SEO and all that stuff. But my first question would be, do you really need that? Because it takes a lot of time. So this is getting around to my tips here. <clears throat> it's hard. Um, first of all, people should know that it's not a walk in the park. Uh, two, it takes way more time than you ever think possible. And people hear me and they're like, oh yeah, totally. Okay. It's gonna take a couple of weeks. Oh no, no. A couple of months. Like, oh, I totally get it. Like three, six months maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months, like maybe longer, it's all up in the air. And it's so unpredictable. So if you have a blog, or even if it's just a website with a portfolio or whatever, and you're trying to be found in Google, it's gonna be hard. Okay, people understand that it's gonna take a long time. It just is, it's gonna take longer than you think. So be prepared for that. Set your expectations, right? Like, right up front, right? It's not gonna be easy or quick. And then number three, uh, this is where I'm going to leave you. This is also the advice that I hate giving because everyone hates to hear it. Do it a lot, right? Like I'm trying to think of some corny stuff. Well, practice makes perfect. There I you mean, go. That's, that's absolutely <laughs> true. Um, you got to figure out what type of content to produce. Like what do we need to write? Like Google likes Q and A questions and answer. Like what are people typing into Google? You got to learn how to do keyword research. You have to learn how to do like site structure. All these things are doable, but they're just six time and back and forth. And there's no way to get great at it other than doing it and then doing it a lot. So those are my three tips. Number one, or actually it's just two really. Number one, set your expectations and know what you're in for. It's gonna take a while. 
And number two, don't wait to get started. Publish a blog post and then publish another one and try and do it in a couple of hours, not a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Like really try and dial in consistency, a routine. People say be consistent. I don't really know what that means. Just try and publish as much as humanly possible and learn as you go along. And I promise you after a hundred blog posts, you'll, you'll be much further along than after 10 blog posts, whether that's in a year or three <clears> months. <throat> so they got, I got no, and that's great. I don't think anybody hates you for that. Uh, sometimes the truth does hurt, <laughs> yes. you know what I'm saying? but you know, it's, it, it's all about repetition and just getting your stuff out there. So that makes a hundred percent. It's not, it's not sexy advice, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's not something hey. people are like, Ooh, I want to do that. Right. I'd love to tell you it's super easy and it'll be fast. Just follow these one, two, three tricks, but yeah, yeah it's not going to happen. Only the strong will survive, I guess. Yeah. Um, and from, so from doing your YouTube channel, what's one thing you've, you've learned? Like what's the best piece of advice for somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel or already doing a YouTube channel just to kind of continue on that, that path? That's a great question. I I'm trying to think of one, like, I, I feel like I have a lot of lessons learned, but I'm trying to think of like, good one here you know it's interesting so you'll you'll read books and you'll listen to podcasts like this and you'll watch youtube videos and you'll you'll buy online courses or you'll attend local universities or whatever to learn stuff and i've i've blogged a lot i've, I've done podcasts i've done youtube i run facebook ads i've run google ads like I, i've dabbled in a lot over the years i feel like youtube more than any other channel has left me uh, trusting the authority figures the least. Here's what I mean by that. There are a bunch of people who can teach you how to YouTube. Um, titles got to be on point. Thumbnails got to be on point, right? Making good content is a lot harder to teach. Um, branding, using your voice, how to edit. There's a million things that go into it, but... I have found personally that taking the advice of influencers <laughs> has led me uh, not not nowhere, but I can't I can't rely on it, man. Even the people who are really yeah. good that I like look up to, whether it's Tim Schmoyer or Nick Nimmons or Daryl Eaves or Sonny Lunarduzzi or watching Peter McKinnon stuff or anybody, like every time I try and like replicate a bunch of their stuff, it doesn't quite work. I think it's more of a uh, throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks type of platform, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Then blogging does. and podcasting <laughs> and most of the other like marketing mediums. So I know, I know maybe that's not super useful or actionable, but if I had to boil that down to a takeaway, it would probably be throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And that's probably going to be more effective than buying 17 books on YouTube. And reading every single one. Gotcha. So content, 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 content. I think so. Content plus analysis plus content plus analysis plus content plus analysis. I think <laughs> right. you gotta you gotta dive in and look at the numbers and see what's working and what's not. Yeah. But yeah, throw stuff against the wall. So I, I have something for you, Pete. So okay. um, when you were answering the first question, you were asking why why SEO. So me and Luke started this channel. Uh, as an outlet for everything that's in here, in our minds. Uh, we constantly think about, you know, everybody wants to quit their day job. You know, like you said, jump two feet in, just go for it, you know. Uh, but again, you know, unless you have an idea or a structure of something that you wanted to do, me and Luke didn't start this uh, podcast slash video show to be Peter McKinnon, we want to we want to be successful like him, meaning that we teach people things and we inspire people. Uh, the same thing you do you 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 draw an audience that personally enjoys what you're pushing out, not necessarily you know the the five million six million subscribers, but you know I think me and Luke get more enjoyment out of completing a show. And putting it out to people for them if they need it versus trying to push it down somebody's throat just to get subscribers. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think that's kind of what you're saying is, you know, uh, there's a lot of things we can put into it that, again, would take us 40 to 50 hours a week. But we don't want to do that. We want to jump on here, 
a couple hours a week, be able to make content, do something that we love to do instead of saying, Hey, I have to do this today. And I don't want that stress. Uh, so, you know, I look at that as, um, as a blessing that we're able to do stuff like this. And I know with the pandemic and the COVID it's pushed more people to, to want to do more stuff like this because it's easier. This zoom call would never happen had the COVID stuff not, I mean, it, you know, I, I would want to interview yeah. people one-on-one, but I mean, this makes it easier to create content for people at home that can just pull it up on their phone and watch it. Would you agree? Yeah. So you're actually, uh, Roger used to like describe my entire brand. Yeah. Let me, let me go ahead. Show you what I mean, <laughs> I kind of do this accidentally because I tend to just, just me personally, I don't actually recommend people follow this. I tend to be very, <laughs> Uh, reckless and fast when it comes to my work. Um, not necessarily intentionally. It's just the way I am. I write very quickly. When I record a podcast episode, I don't do a whole lot of prep and research. I'm kind of just like hit and record and I go. When I do a right. YouTube video, I'll do like a basic outline and I'll kind of think through the video beforehand because I do think it helps. But if I'm being honest, my goal is to get it done as fast as humanly possible. And that's just been my brand. I hardly edit my emails, which is stupid because I sent out a link to a YouTube video this morning, FYI. Yeah. And I was like, why does my video have zero views? What is going on? Well, I'm an idiot. And I had set it to publish tomorrow <laughs> instead of today. <laughs> and so I like, I emailed several thousand people to this link and it was broken. And I, I should have caught that, right? Yeah. That's me being a little reckless. But I think there's a huge upside to that too. And for example, so. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you have your nicer cameras set up for like webcams as well, like with a cam link or something. I do, and I'm not even using it. I'm using my super cheap webcam. Hey, we are too. <laughs> I know, it doesn't matter. I've got, are... a, I've got an expensive camera that we could be using, but this looks good to me. Yours looks good. Looks looks good. This is perfect for YouTube, right? I think it looks good enough. <laughs> good enough. And I love this philosophy, right? Just make yeah. it good enough and help people more. Right. Like if, if you produce 10 videos a year yeah, and they're super well polished, but you don't help as many people as your reckless 100 videos, <laughs> you know, which one gets my vote, right? I got gotcha. you. Put out content, make phone calls, write the emails, write the blog posts, like get it done, make it good enough. You don't want to make it crappy. Obviously, right. obviously it's not my excuse to do that, but yeah, man, I I'm with you. I like being a little sloppy. I like being a little real cut down time on editing. Right. Um, if you'll, you want me to rant for one more minute? I got to rant. Sure. Um, go ahead. It, okay, it, this is your time right now. <laughs> so this is especially for the people who do video <laughs> out there. Um, especially video, like they're on video, not just videographers, but they're on video. Gotcha. I think it is a learnable skill to be able to, uh, well, I guess perform is the best word to perform and do things in like one take. I was watching a friend of mine record a YouTube video. This is two years ago at this point. I'd never seen anybody else record a YouTube video before. And we're good friends. Like I, I've known this person for a long time. And they're like, yeah, um, maybe you could just help me out by doing the camera since you're here. I was like, yeah, no problem. Let's do this. <laughs> well, like three hours later and then like 17 takes in the outro later. And I'm like, why do you do it like this? You can deliver the content. Like I've seen you, like, why, why is I doing this? And I think there was a bit of perfectionism. And I think this particular person had never tried to just do it in one take. And again, I don't want to give pe people permission to be bad, but I think it's a skill that you can get better at. If I sat down with a gun to your head and I'm like, Roger and Luke, you guys are going to make a YouTube video on X, Y, Z. It's due out next week. Yeah. You have to do it in one take. That might be <laughs> kind of bad, right? But if I did that for four weeks in a row or eight weeks in a row or a year in a row, after a year, you'd be able to nail it in one take. Am I right? Or at least yeah, it would be. No, listen, awesome. you're absolutely right. And trust me, we, we go back and look at our episode one, episode two, episode three. The, we <laughs> were so that. unpolished. Uh, listen, our backgrounds were horrible. Our mics were, were horrible. Our cameras were horrible, but we still put it out there and we were like, let's just see if we can get an audience. Let's just see if we can get some people engaged, you know? And yeah. now 
to see where we're at and we have someone uh, such as your caliber on our show that even give us the time. I mean, we're, we're grateful. We really are. And, and I think we have came, we've come a long way. Would you agree, Luke, since we first got started? Leaps and bounds, but we still have leaps and bounds to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't have, but this is episode 22. So Pete, we are still brand new. So but yet we've learned 22. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've learned so much, man. And like you say, it's Good. it's the repetition, but it's not consistent. Now we've we've taken you know a couple weeks break here and there, a couple months at a time, you know, just for personal stuff. But uh, but I see what you're saying, okay. and everybody out there in in the audience, you know, watching this is going to understand that because everybody has a, a life that they have to 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 live. But this is something that we're very passionate about and we're going to get better. And we, like I say, we have we have increased uh, just our presence and, and the way we we talk about things, I think, has gotten a lot better. So. Yeah. So very good. All right, Luke, uh, let's move on to uh, question number three. Uh, so you kind of already answered a little bit, but uh, it takes time for, for your followers and, you know, to, to network. You can get to go through frustration, you know, anger, despair, depression. You know, what what's something that you could suggest to a viewer or somebody trying to get going like that? Not necessarily to the the influencer level, but just just get started. You know, so they don't fall apart. Just one tip of advice besides just just keep going. Yeah, it's funny. I had this exact same conversation a couple of hours ago, actually, on a, on, a, on a different podcast. It's funny when we say the words, follow your passion or do what you love or, or you know what I'm talking about, right? We'll just call it right, follow your passion. Right, I think yeah. you want to yeah, yeah. what that means. I think it's simultaneously the best and worst advice ever. I do think it's important, but I think it needs to be coupled with a few other questions. Just follow your passion. And actually, before I say that, I'll say the answer to your question is trying to find a topic, an industry, a niche, um, you, know, you know, something, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's on the internet or a local photography business or something like your niche, your audience, your topic, your industry, whatever that is, find something that you can naturally persist <laughs> at through the crappy parts, like you mentioned, right? The slump. Uh, and what could you do for three years and not get paid a dime for, but still raise your hand and say, I, I enjoyed that. I got through it at least there's going to be hard times no matter what it is, man. Like that's what we signed up for as entrepreneurs or small business owners for that matter. We signed up for the slumps. I hate to tell people that. And I wish somebody had slapped me five years ago and told me that, but in general, um, I was going to say, follow your passion again, not follow your passion (laughs) in a, in a woo woo way, but man, you need to make sure you're doing something that you enjoy enough to persist through. I got you. And a a small tangent to that, I mentioned that follow your passion is much better advice when it's coupled with a few other questions. Those few other questions in my eyes are, what am I good at? What do I enjoy doing? That's like follow your passion. And then what has the potential to grow, right? Some things, like I I do a lot of things. I got some hobbies that are not gonna make me a dime. I'm not gonna start, a coffee business. I don't, I don't really see that going anywhere, <laughs> right? But I love coffee. I'm obsessed with coffee. Um, what are you passionate about? What can you persist through those crappy parts with? What are you good at? And not like the best in the world, but good enough at. And then make sure it has potential to make money. Uh, I don't know if that actually answered your question, now, but that's, that's it, it. Did it's that's great. My brain. Great. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. Okay. Uh, right. And the last one is, you know, what what are your plans for 2022? Like next year, where do you see yourself or where do you see your blogs or where are you going to be next year? It's a great question. And I have no idea. I'm just going to be honest with you. So most of my, my goal in life right now, aside from being a good husband and a good father, which I'm questionable at on the best days, <laughs> um, no, my, my goal in life with work is to have complete freedom of my time <laughs> and energy. That's my only goal, right? Yeah. I don't I have a very lax calendar, except for Wednesdays. <laughs> I don't know why everything <laughs> happens on Wednesdays. I don't plan for it this way. Uh, it's hump day, man. What are you That's thinking? Fine. It's hump day. <laughs> um, 
but just just freedom in general. So my 22, 2022 plan, excuse me, is to basically continue what I'm doing now. I have I have a few projects that are on the docket. Um, one of which I'm not sharing publicly yet. It's actually my second YouTube channel, and I also have a, a an accompanying blog for that. I'm doing that. That's just like a side project that I'm into. Again, well, it's kind when of you when you release that, let me know. We'll have you back on the show. Okay. Uh, How's that? Like maybe six months or five okay. months or, or something. Sounds like good. Well, by then we'll we'll both blow up. You know, our show and your show. So. Yeah, I, I don't mind sharing it with a few people. I just don't want to send. I, don't know, I just don't want. I, we, got you. we got you. We got you. So yeah, man, just continuing to do a little bit of YouTube for Do You Even Blog. I'm not going to publish every week like I've tried to in 2020 and 2021. Right. Um, but just lay back. I'll keep doing Do You Even Blog stuff. I'll do some side projects. I'll probably ski and make a lot of coffee and uh, hang out <laughs> on podcasts. That's kind of so, a lame answer. No, know, it's okay. Now that I think about it. So where where are you at now? Like, uh, what state are you living in now? My family and I moved up to northern Michigan. Okay, um, Michigan. Okay. Right before the pandemic, actually. Um, my wife's from here. Um, I'm from Georgia, as you guys know. Totally different weather, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I like it. I'm not going to lie. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I like skiing, and our summers are like chef's kiss, right? When you're used to like the southern weather, and you yeah. come up here for summers, you're like, this is amazing. No mosquitoes, and it's like 85 degrees. Max. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. I like it. Good. So I have one, one question I want to throw in there. Uh, I did add it into the pre-show notes, but, uh, I'm a photographer slash videographer. Let's say there's other uh, viewers out there that are in the same boat. Uh, and at one time I did start a blog, but I kind of quit it because everything was kind of shifting toward the video side of everything like TikTok and, uh, Instagram and you know uh, even Facebook having all these videos. So in a in a time where we have that, how do we start focusing back on blogs and how would we promote that from a business standpoint in this yeah. industry? I think it really boils down to what is it you want or what any of us wants. If it's strictly to make money, I would say. Don't even bother. Like, go get wedding clients if you're a photographer and you can make more money. It might be more stressful, but you can make more money. If it is to cultivate a following on the internet, then we have a different, we have a different agenda, right? And again, this is kind of unsexy advice. Uh, and it's actually advice I don't even follow. So I don't know why I'm saying <laughs> it really. But the truth is, is, we all have to adapt as the internet adapts. And if people aren't reading blogs and Google search results are literally giving you the answer before anybody clicks through to your website, right? Like the snippets and everything. Right. You have to adapt to that. And if Instagram is all like, sorry, photographers, but we're going video now, we got to adapt to that. And people are migrating to TikTok for Lord knows why. We have to like adapt that, right? So again, that's advice that I don't actually take because I don't want to do any of that stuff for the most part. But getting back to still images and blogs and websites, the only thing I can think of is, oh, there's a, what is this? I'm going to be corny and woo woo again with you. <laughs> there's a Steve Jobs quote. It's something to the effect of be so good. They can't ignore you. Have you ever heard that? I yeah. Know. I mean, I've heard like something that. similar. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have a, a real example of this, and then I'll I'll shut up. I promise. Um, my friend Alex is a he's in a real estate like he's a real estate investor. It's how he like earns money or whatnot. But he's been an amateur photographer for years and years and years, and he's good. He's not great, but he's good. He doesn't take on clients. It's just like what he does, right? Like he yeah. likes taking pictures. <clears throat> something he does that I thought was really smart. And not everybody can do this, but something he can is he puts himself in situations to take important or interesting photos. For example, during the, oh, I can't remember where it was. It was in the Carolinas last year. There was uh, riots, right? As part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Charlotte. And some other stuff. And again, I can't remember exactly where it was. I, I think it was Charlotte. But he made a big point. <clears throat> it could have been Charlotte. 
You could be right. Um, he went out of his way a little bit to make sure he was in a spot to take good photos. And he did a blog post. So it's live on his site right now. You can go look it up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And people, I don't want to say they loved it because it's a weird subject matter to love, but they, they found it interesting and they clicked through and they read and they followed him. And so the takeaway here is to, well, be so good they can't ignore you. But part of that is make sure you're setting yourself up so that people are interested and they will click and they want to see what it is you're offering. If you're taking local landscape, people are like really looking to click on. You can try your audience there, but what could be more interesting than that? What could be more clickable than that? What would people want to see? What would they click on? What are they looking for? How could you engage them in a super busy internet, right? They're on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. How can you get them off? Like, what do you need to do? And nothing in post-production, by the way. It's all about like putting yourself to take interesting photos or video. I don't know if that made any sense or not, but that's what I'm It did. And the one I'm taking away is that you have to find a balance for your audience. Like you can do the videos on Instagram, but still post something to your blog or do a screenshot from the video and drive people um, to read the article or to read the blog and also still watch the video. I mean, would that be something that you would recommend? I think so. <clears throat> That's not bad. Good deal. I, it comes down to what you want. Like, what, what, are, what are you trying to, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get clients? Are you trying to get a following? You're I'm trying to, to get it all, scene. Pete. Like, I'm trying to get it all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, all right. Um, you got to do all the work then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got to do all the work. All right, guys, so that is Pete McPherson. So, Pete, again, we are very grateful for you being on our show. And, uh, Luke, is there any last words you want to say to Pete before we go into uh, how they can contact him? I'd just like to thank him for his time. Uh, he is by far uh, taking time out of his busy schedule for us. Um, we appreciate every single second of it. Thank you. Uh, first of all, it's very kind of you to say. Uh, second of all, I'm happy to. This has been fun. and. Honestly, it's so weird. Like I mentioned the Wednesday thing earlier. My my schedule is not busy. Like I, <laughs> I I try really hard to keep it not busy. It's just yeah. Wednesdays for whatever reason end up being like lots of calls. Anyways, uh, no, I I'm absolutely happy to. Thank you guys for having me on. You're welcome. Uh, so Pete, give us a little rundown. Uh, we'll do a screen share. Where we'll be able to see some of your um, uh, your work and just kind of describe that to us and uh, how people can get in touch with you while we do that. So generally speaking, you can, you can find out a lot about who I am and, and what I do with Do Even Blog right there on the homepage. Uh, it's doyouevenblog.com. Yep, and looking at my about page, you can go, you can go read my <laughs> life story, which <laughs> you already heard on this podcast, but you can find out more right there. And uh, also on the YouTube channel, you can probably just head to okay. YouTube and search for Pete McPherson or Do Even Blog. I think you actually go to, yeah, youtube.com slash do even blog. Slash and, videos, yeah, or homepage, yeah. Yeah. I, the, the entirely too many videos up there for you to <laughs> you know, dive through. Uh, you know what? Actually, one more thing. If you just want to email me, Pete at do you even blog .com. I, I mean, I answer every email, or I, I try to at least. And yeah, just hit me up if you're listening to this, want to say, hey, have any questions or whatever. I'm here for you. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And again, Pete, we are very grateful here at The Next Shot for you coming on our show today and answering some of the questions that Luke and myself had. And, you know, when whenever you're ready, uh, if you want to jump back on and let's see how this episode does for both of us. Uh, we'll push it out there hopefully next week and uh, see what people think about some of the things that you've covered today. Uh, we'll, yeah, we may answer some uh, some questions from uh, the audience and and. You know, when you get ready to come back on, just give us uh, a call and uh, we'll be glad to, to accept your. Uh... I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete, anytime you want to come back on the show, man, and uh, discuss some of the things that you're working on, uh, we'll be glad to have you. Right, Luke? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man. I'm happy to come back anytime. Thanks for having me. Very good. All right, guys, that's it for me, Roger, with Unlimited Photography. Luke? 
Till next time. Thank you, guys. And Pete, any last words? Adios. Adios. Well, that's it for this episode. Until next time, keep shooting. Me do my two steps.